let's begin kneeling, finding a little bit of movement through the wrists to help prepare us for this workout. This workout is going to focus on core stability. Whether we're holding a position or moving through an exercise, we want to focus on doing so with as much control as possible. Coming up right, we can swing our arms back and forth, crisscrossing in front of the body. And then work on rolling those shoulders back. Making our way now to a forearm plank, you can keep your hands clasped or forearms parallel to each other. Lengthen out the body, keeping the hips low. Round out those shoulder blades, getting wide and strong through the shoulders. I want you to tuck your tailbone down and engage the core as we hold. We have 30 seconds to go. Ten seconds left. Lower your knees and stretch it back. In between exercises, we don't just have to hold a resting position. We can work through stretches that target body parts that were just worked in the exercises that we just did, whether they feel tight or sore. So from here, if your shoulders are a little bit tight, you can work on stretching them a little bit if you want to. In between further exercises, you may want to target a different part of the body depending on what the past exercise just was. Whether it's a little bit of a shimmy, a stretch, or just shaking out a part of the body like shaking out the wrists, anything that helps your body feel ready and prepared to move on to the next exercise. Now we're going to return to that forearm plank position, pelvis tucked, core engaged. We're going to alternate tapping the knee down to the floor 10 times on each side. Lower the knees and stretch it back. This time we're going to be moving from an extended plank. Your arms are going to be straight and you're going to be up on your hands, fingers spread wide, fingertips pressing down firmly to relieve some of the pressure from the wrists. Tuck that tailbone down, engage the core, and we're going to alternate tapping each foot out to the side 10 times. Lower your knees and stretch it back.
Back to that extended plank, arms straight, up on your hands. We're gonna go into alternating shoulder taps 10 times on each shoulder, and this time I want you to focus on rocking through the body as little as possible throughout the exercise. Lower the knees and stretch. Back to that forearm plank, this time we're going into alternating hip dips. So we're going to rainbow our hips from one side to the other 10 times on each side with as much control as possible as your hip touches down and then you guide it over to the other side. Lower down to stretch. We've been working the core quite a bit, so if it feels good to go into a back bend or a cobra pose, you can do that here. Or you can stretch it back to work any part of the body that's feeling tight, whatever feels best. Coming forward once again, this time we're going to be going into forearm side plank holds. So making your way onto your side on your forearm, we're going to lift the hips and stack the feet one above the other. Your top hand can rest on your hip and we're holding for 30 seconds. Ten seconds left. Coming through plank to side plank on the opposite side, we're holding for 30 seconds. Ten seconds left. Release with control and stretch it back.
Next, we're moving into an extended side plank, so that arm's going to be straight up on your hand. You can stagger your feet one in front of the other for more stability as we move through some hip dips five times. That upper hand is going to come down as we lower the hips and raise it back up. Through plank, let's repeat that on the opposite side. Control your way back to plank, lower the knees and stretch it back. Moving into a tabletop position, line your knees up under your hips, wrists under your shoulders, fingers spread wide, fingertips pressing down, tuck the pelvis and engage the core as we move into bird dogs. We're going to extend the right arm left leg and lower down, opposite side and repeat. Continue alternating sides for a total of 10 times on each side or moving with me. As you move through this exercise, avoid dipping in the lower back. Instead, engage that glute muscle and use it to help you raise that leg up while keeping the core engaged and strong. Sit back on the heels for a rest. Returning to table, again line yourself up, tuck your pelvis under, engage the core. This time we're going to curl those toes under, so you're coming onto your toes. And then we're going to press through the hands and hover the knees, holding here for about 30 seconds. Be sure to keep a flat back, keeping the core engaged throughout. Ten seconds to go. Lower your knees and if you're on a mat, you're going to want to come to the back of your mat, staying in this tabletop position. Once there, tuck the pelvis, engage the core. We're going to be walking the hands out as far as we can while maintaining a flat back as we hinge the hips to lower them. As soon as you feel like you'll either drop to the mat or need to bend in your back, walk the hands back to table. Continue repeating this at your own pace. You might find that with repetition, you can walk your hands out farther and farther.
finishing up on your last one. We're going to bring the hips back and then transition to a seated position with our knees bent, feet planted ahead of us. From here we're going into a C hold. You'll begin to recline, rounding out the back and at that moment where you feel like you need to straighten up or lower all the way down, tighten up the core and hold for 15 seconds. Straighten up and bring the soles of the feet together to a butterfly stretch, either pressing the knees down or pulsing them to loosen up the legs. Keeping the legs in this position, we're going into butterfly sit-ups. As we recline, our hands touch down behind us, and as we come back up, we're being careful that we're not lifting the feet or heels. We're doing this with as much control as possible, even if that means we need to move a little bit slower. Continue moving at your own pace. Last one. Let's make our way all the way down onto our backs. Once you're there, I want you to tuck your pelvis under just like you've been doing and bring both legs to a tabletop position. Arms at your sides, we're going into single leg toe taps, hinging from the hip with little to no movement in the knee. This is important to make sure that you are working from your core in the most effective way possible. Continue alternating sides, moving at your own pace. Last one, you can bring your hands to your knees and relax the legs for a rest. Moving into a glute bridge, I want you to lower your feet down to the mat, arms at your sides, adjust the pelvis as needed, and then raise those hips up. Squeeze tightly through the glutes to keep those hips elevated as we hold here for about 45 seconds.
10 seconds left. Lower those hips with control and draw the knees in for a rest. Returning to that glute bridge, this time we're going to be marching our feet, alternating sides. I want you to focus on keeping your hips up throughout this entire exercise without letting them dip down between marches. After this next one, returning to your glute bridge, then slowly lowering the hips back down with control. Knees come in for a rest. feet come down, we're going to be moving into a chin nod press. With your arms at your sides, I want you to raise the shoulders and nod your chin down towards your chest, holding it here tightly. Then pulling your legs to a tabletop position, press your hands against your thighs as you press those thighs back into your hands, creating tension. Stay here for about 10 more seconds. Release and lower. Legs stay in tabletop position, send those arms straight up. We're going to drop that right arm back as we extend the left leg out long. Turn and repeat on the opposite side. Continue alternating sides, moving at your own pace. Returning those legs to a tabletop position and avoid rocking the body from side to side throughout. Last one. Next, I want you to bring your knees together and hold on to them with your hands. We're going to roll like a ball to seated. But as we come up, I want you to make sure that you stop on your glutes and that you're not tapping your toes down to stop you, using control rather than momentum. On the way back, we don't touch the neck down. The head stays lifted. Continue moving at your own pace, or you can do 10 following me.
As you roll up on the next one, you're going to plant your feet and come to standing hands-free. Then again, hands-free if possible, back down to roll five times. Stay in standing on the last one, we're going to move into a stretch. Starting on the right side with a knee to chest hold. Lower with control and repeat on the opposite side. Release and lower with control. Cross your right foot to the outside of your left as you move into a forward bend hinging from the hips, keeping a flat back as much as possible. If you need to, you can bend a little bit in the knees. Coming back up, cross your feet the opposite way and return to that forward bend. To standing, side bend to the left, stretching that right arm up and over. You can hold on to a wall or a chair here for support if you want to. And to the opposite side. To standing, stretch the right arm across the body. Then the left. Clasp your hands behind your back and raise your arms up as high as you can without folding in the body. Release and shake out the wrists to finish.